All truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Jesus said in John 8.32, you shall know the truth. And there's one thing about the truth, it will make you free. And the first thing you need free is your mind. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Greetings to each and every last one of you. The sweet presence is strong. Victorious and mighty overcoming name our soon coming King, Yahshua HaMashiach, uh, Jesus the Christ. I uh, we'll hope that tonight's greeting and this Sabbath rest find each and every last one of you in full strength and health. Hallelujah. Uh, we know that the King is coming and that we are thankful for. Well, I'm not going to be along here tonight with you, uh, but that's all right. That's all right. We are... Um, have uh, Brother Brett and Brother JC up visiting with us from Florida. Uh, it's always good to see Brother Brett's face. First time we laid eyes on, on Brother JC. Uh, brother's got an excellent spirit. We thank the Father for that. Um, good Israelites. Good, strong, young Israelites that fear the Father and love Him. And you just can't beat that now we're living in. Uh, El Rupas, Sister Jennifer El Rupas, the head up down at the um, assembly down in Georgia. Is up here visiting with us again uh, to come up here to see actual brother JC. And um, so El Rupus will be with us again tomorrow to service him and his wife and his daughter. Uh, of course, then we have the saints of the Most High Yah. Glory to the King. Biblical terms, biblical terms. You know, each and every last one of us need to make sure that we pay attention. Um, that we pay attention to not only us, first, number one, Umro. Uh, that we submit to biblical terms, meaning that we do what the Bible says. Um, and I'm sure that we all fall short in many, many areas. Uh, but when it's presented to us and it's bought in front of us, we need to make sure we're doing what the Scripture says. Likewise, also, uh, people who claim to be and people who say that they are Israelites themselves, they need to fit the bill. You can judge a tree by its fruit. You need to pay attention to fruit. You need to watch people to see if they have the fruit that fits that Bible. Because not everyone to say that they're Israel is Israel. And I know that's a hard, rude awakening for many, many folks, but it's a fact. So we need to make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can uh, to stay the course. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and, and that we are meeting the righteousness of you self. Be the Father's will, we'll try to preach a little bit, do a little bit of teaching uh, tomorrow on the tithe. Hopefully we'll get to it this time. But whatever the Father says is fine with us. Give us a good understanding of it. Hallelujah. I thank each and every last one of you for your support. Uh, those of you who respect me enough as a man of God to actually um, realize the labor of love that I'm actually putting forth. I really truly mean nobody, no harm whatsoever at all. But I do know that feelings uh, will get hurt. Emotions will get hurt. Uh, it's not my intent to hurt anybody's feelings and emotions. But nevertheless, we're not led by feelings and emotions. Uh, the Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. That's what we ought to be led, guy, led by and guided by on a daily basis. So I do know that preaching the word will sometimes offend. And it will bring an offense to a lot of people uh, simply because, um, you know, I'm, I'm um, standing on the word. And most people, when you really truly look at their lives, you do an evaluation of it. Uh, they're not in this to conform, nor are they in this to convert um, and become a new creature. Uh, they want salvation. They want eternal life, but they're not willing to lay down their life for it. Henceforth, we see uh, the lack of change today in people's heart and mind. Um, how did people's present life is still the same? Oh, you may got a little, you know, small changes here, or you change it there, you change it there, you change it there. Uh, but the enemy, uh, who is our foe, I guarantee you, he's always seeking what he can do to wear out the patience of the saints. Uh, and he's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. 
But as long as we keep our eyes on the king, as long as we fellowship with him and keep holiness, the king won't get us. I mean, uh, the devil won't get us, excuse me. I'm kind of a little bit slow here tonight. Uh, I won't be on with you long here tonight. Sorry about it. I had a little twinge in my throat, and Sister Carol made me some tea, and I think she put some wild turkey in that tea, and boy, it's hitting me hard. It is hitting me hard. Uh, I think she made one of them old-fashioned type teas and stuff. But I can tell you right now, I can tell I'm getting a little groggy. Woo, mercy. But um, I think it's one of those things that um, that they use for the throat, but we best to follow for it. Without further ado, we'll go to the phone lines. I need you to speak clear and concise, precise when I call your name. We'll take a few phone calls, maybe no more than maybe five or ten, and we're going to go ahead and call the broadcast here tonight. Sorry that it's so short. Uh, but we have a message we have to deliver tomorrow on the Sabbath be the Father's will, and I think that, that we will. Hallelujah. Uh, call number 347. This is Pastor Dow. Junior, how you doing, my brother? How can I help you here on the Straight With You radio broadcast tonight, my brother? Good afternoon, my beloved Pastor of St. Louis tonight. Shabbat Shalom, Junior. Could y'all feel better? Yeah, it's actually feeling a little better. I think that that, that little hit of wild turkey or whatever Sister Carol put in there, brother, is taking his toll on me. Ha! Yes, sir. The able will get a tithe of offering that speaks you there on Shabbat. You're talking about tithe by giving yourself, giving your, your own time to the Father, being around your family. That's tithe offering to about yourself, not money. You're talking about your own time with the Father, the time with your, your, your family Israel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're going to cover. Too, about. Yeah, we're going to cover a lot of that tomorrow. Um, we're going to cover a lot of that tomorrow, brother Junior. I told, I told about um, the last foot that last week. Service about the men of Israel. That's like some of that. Spend time your family. Oh, you loved that, didn't That's you? How the offering too. That was beautiful, so wasn't it? Yeah, we don't have enough men that spend spending time with their families today, and it's just a sad, sad shame. We got people out there who champion themselves as fathers. Um, they neglect, and they abandon. Can you open it up and give me two of them out there? They neglect, and they abandon, um, forsake, desert, you know, the whole nine yards, abuse. Uh, and they call themselves fathers. That's all right. You know, if we can embrace the message that is coming forth here today, the father would definitely preserve of those of us that are Israel, and he is doing it. Um, those of us who are real true Israelites, we're going to continue on with the separation away from the world, um, and we're going to continue to grow in grace and in knowledge, and as we grow in grace and knowledge, we're going to find ourselves even more being the offscouring of this earth, even more separated from this earth, and we're going to find, Junior, that many people who thought that they were Israelites, we're going to watch them fall away and, and literally just lose their salvation. You'll see. <laughs> Not me, Pastor, not me. I mean, I, and it, but the main thing is to change in the main way that will save my life so I get better for the Father. Look at myself, myself in the mirror. So I worry about other people. I worry about me first. You know, know the enemy is you got to know yourself first. Yes, sir. You know I mean? After that, you, you can figure who, 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 who's Israel, who's not Israel, who's the weak and the tears. Should be around the, um, the weak of the weak. Correct. Donnie did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job bringing forth that word. The elders are doing fine, doing good. Yes, sir, absolutely. Absolutely. He hit, he hit me. That fire. They have, they have fire, man. They elders have fire. Yes, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir, Pastor. The rest I'll see you tomorrow. Can't get peace in mind about the offering, right? Tomorrow. Right? <coughs> All right, my brother. It's about too long. Bless you. 
All right, all right. Let's go to New Jersey. Call number 201. It's Pastor Dow. You know, straight away to the radio broadcast. I can help you. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. This is John. Hey, John. My I... first time calling. Oh, good. How uh, are you, Pastor? I'm doing well. A little tired. You know, been working uh, very, very hard this week. Right, right. I know you're a very busy man. And, uh... I wanted to say, I hope, I hope you feel better. I'll pray for you about that cold you got going on there. I don't think it's a cold. I just, just wanted to say. Uh, it's just like a twinge in my throat or something, but thank you for praying for me. I definitely will. I just wanted to say, uh, my brother and I will be uh, attending a Shabbat service here in New Jersey tomorrow with uh, Brother Junior and Brother Randy. Beautiful. And uh I've been talking to them. They're very edifying and very strengthening. And I thank God that he, you know, he sent them my way. And hey. I thank God for having a pastor like you and, and the hard work he put in. Hey, uh, John, how did you um, come across um, the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast? How did you come across him? Well, um, I've been listening to you for a little over a year now. Um, I started out in the truth movement, and um, I... I was led to you uh, by my younger brother, Anthony. And uh, the second I heard you talk, I said, this man, this is, this is a gold mine of truth here. This is a, this is a true, this is a true pastor of Yah here. This man speaks nothing but truth. And uh, you've strengthened me uh, very much. So. And I appreciate everything you do and everything that you guys do straight away. So what were some of the um, background that you used to have before you came to listen to um, uh, Pastor Dow? Well, um, I grew up a, a Roman Catholic. I was actually an, an altar boy when I was a kid. Mm. And uh, as I got older, you know, I never really, I, ne I didn't really concentrate on the most high or anything that I was just living for the day. And uh, I went through a lot of hardships in about 16, 17, um, I woke up to a lot of the truth going on to the world, like uh, the NWO and chemtrails and all the wicked things that these guys are unleashing on man. And, uh, yeah, eventually um, I was led to you, and I, it was like a, it was like a godsend. And now, you know, you're my pastor, and I don't eat off any other tables, and uh, I'm beginning to oh shit, and... Uh, Tomorrow I'll be going for a deliverance, so I'm accepting myself for that and trying to tear down some strongholds now and accepting myself for tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hey, brother John, welcome aboard. Stay the course and uh, grow, grow with us, brother, as we continue to make strong Israelite man for the kingdom of Yah. Thank you so much, Pastor. I definitely will. I'll definitely keep tuning in. And uh, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for all your hard work. Keep on praying for me, brother John. Hey, welcome aboard, brother. Bless you. Bless you too, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good hearing from brother John there. Let's go to Hawaii. Call number 808. Sister Carol in Hawaii. It's Pastor Dow. You're on know, Straightway Truth Radio Broadcast. How can I help you, Sister Carol? Shalom, Pastor, and to all the family that's living down there with you. Boy, I tell you, Shalom, Sister Carol. You know, Sister Carol and I, we miss uh, visiting with you and your husband there in Hawaii and hearing the Koki Frogs. I miss you folks too a lot. Too much, I miss. <laughs> <laughs> but you take care of your cold and bless you all. Love you. Love, shalom. Love you too. Shalom, my sister. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Now, don't be alarmed. I don't think I have a cold. I think I have a twin. Something like that. Something is in my throat going on. But I'll be all right. But I appreciate y'all concern. Let's go to North Carolina, 910, Sister Zaza. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Dow. You're on Straightway Truth Radio Broadcast. Good to hear from you, sister. Let's go to North Carolina, 910. Sister Zaza, you want to cut your computer down and talk to me on the phone? Yes, hello, Pastor Dow. How are you? Oh, doing well, Israel. It's good to hear from you.
all of the saints every day. Oh, I need it, sister. Hey, I appreciate your, I appreciate your support, and I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate you giving, everything you do, and don't forget to keep me lifted up because I need some strong Israelites to be praying for me because, you know, my enemies are increasing as the more that the Father continues to keep bringing the word forth in power and strength and authority to wake up his people Israel in this last hour. Yes, right, sir. You are so right because I tell them I can feel the... Look like a dragon, fiery, hot breath, breathing down our necks and breathing hard. And I thought that if I can feel it, you can feel it much, much more. Hey, I got a lot so of you, you faithful Israelites who is actually covering me and keeping a lot of the fiery darts of the enemy away from me simply because you're praying for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We sure I never fail to do it, sir. So you just know that you got one one of the strong Israelites here in North Carolina that got you back in the spirit. Hallelujah. It's always good hearing from you, my sister. You stay encouraged. You hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, Pastor, I just wanted to know, can I be invited to the Passover? Oh, sister, you ain't got to ask that. Just jump in that car and get on up here. All right, sir. It's a done deal. Just let us know when you're coming, okay? <laughs> Okay, yes, sir. I sure will. Sister Joy and I are planning to, you know, make that trip together again. All right. That's a good couple. And we're really right. excited. All right. Y'all be safe, okay? Yes, sir. We sure will. You continue to be encouraged. Yes. Love you, Pastor. Love you, bye too. Bye. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, hey, Sister Zaza, Sister Joy is going to be coming up here for Passover, which is always good seeing them. Um, and then y'all make sure that y'all sisters are keeping a tab of all the faithful Israelites that are coming. You know, I've got a lot of people that are, there's quite a few people that's going to be new to this Passover that you never met before. And I know as bad as it sounds, uh, but it is true. There are, there are a lot of people that have called the dining hall or, or emailed me, texted me in some way, shape, fashion, or form asking if they can come to the Passover. And I flat out told them, no, you cannot come to Yahweh's Passover, not with us. You can go out there and fool around with the rest of these hypocrites. You go and fool around the rest of these folks who are stage playing and these people who are wrestling the scriptures to their own destruction. But we're very serious about what we do here straightway. That's the reason why we live a very separated lifestyle. Um, and we're doing all that we can um, to fight against wind and tide and to grow. Um, and the opposition hey, is going to continue to keep growing. But nevertheless, um, I've actually told, told some people, you are not coming to this Passover and celebrating here with us. Um, now, I can't stop you from celebrating online. Uh, and I can't stop you from going to other assemblies and doing it, but just know this, we're not going to have your attitude, your bad attitude and your bad spirit um, eating and, and celebrating y'all's holy feast and our feast of charity. Uh, this is for people who are serious, people who mean business, people who want to be holy, and people who do not keep up a bunch of discord among the brethren. Glory to the King. So maybe one day you'll get serious about serving the Father. Let's go to uh, New York, there to Brother Ami. Call number 347. This is Pastor Dow. You're going to stay with you there. You're broadcast. How can I help you there? Brother, I mean, my brother. Shabbat shalom, Father. Ah, you sound like you're, you're, back, in, you're back in the saddle there, Brother Ami. You hear me, Pastor? I can hear you good. You sound like you're back in the saddle. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hey, Pastor, you keep, they encourage, Pastor, and they keep bringing that hardcore truth, Pastor. You know, the most high, you know, the most high, I was reading something about, you know, Yahshua. Yes, sir. Said that. And uh, it said that um, he called, he don't call you my servant, he said, he calls you, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing, I call you my friend, because yeah. everything that the most high, had, every revelation the most high gave him, he shares it with with this, with the with the body. That's right. And, and as soon as I read, that, I was like, "Wow, Pastor!" And I was like, "Man, first thing I I thought about was you, because you know you any revelation you come up and you tell it, because you want the saint to be informed, just as you know, as the Father gives you wisdom and understanding." That's right. I want all of Israel to know the truth. I don't care how painful it is or how good it feels. Uh, I know that truth, no matter which way it comes, no matter how it sounds. It always has one particular nature about it. Truth always sets free. And the lie always binds. Glory to the king. Pastor, you have a blessed night. You stay, get some good rest, Pastor. Can't wait, can't wait. Lift 
up thy voice like a trumpet and show the house of Jacob and show my people their sins. Hallelujah. Keep praying for me, my brother, all right? God bless you. Bless you. Yes, sir. Bless you. Hallelujah. You know, last uh, blog talk, you know, y'all go download it. What a blog talk radio broadcast that was. Just encouragement after encouragement after encouragement. Just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, let's go to uh, Kansas. The brother Peter called number 785-785. This is Pastor Dow. You know, Survey with you, the radio broadcast. How can I help you? Sir, Pastor so Long, Pastor, how are you doing tonight? I'm blessed to the most high. Yeah. How can I help you, my brother? Well, the only really thing I want to ask is, is it okay if I come later for Passover and fellowship and all the things there and you? How long have you been listening to us, Peter? For two years. Two years? Yeah, come on down. You just need to get in touch with the people at the dining hall. I want you to talk to Elder Doug. I call and ask for Elder Doug, leave your phone number. Uh, but everybody can hear me. You come on down. Okay. And that's all I wanted. Thank you very much. And it's a to come on. Just let us know when you're coming, all right? I will. And make sure, hey, sometimes we have a lot of people that come. So in case you're not prepared and stuff, make sure you bring you a, a nice tent and a sleeping bag, all right? I got that covered. Thank you very much. All right. All right, so call call, call the dining hall and give them your information so that our sisters can keep the log, okay? Yes, sir. It's about too long. All right, see, there's another new person that just got invited us up um, to the Passover this year. And, um, um, you know, we, we ask for people to let us know when you, you're coming and you get approval to come. And the reason being is because our sisters, Sister Carol and the sisters, have logistics. We have a, a, a lot that we have to keep up with. We have to feed a lot of people. Um, we have to house some people, and then other people, we sleep in tents. Um, Pastor Dow may sleep out in the tent with y'all this year during Passover. It makes no big deal to me. Um, I mean, if I can go many, many years sleeping on the ground in and, and all different types of weather, it ain't going to trouble me to sleep in the tent with the saints of the most high. Yeah, I kind of enjoy sleeping in the tent, believe it or not, um, here on the land, especially when the saints are here. It's just a beautiful time of fellowship, seeing everybody, uh, witnessing Everybody having one heart, one soul, one mind, and one spirit. And how the unity, the power of the unity is continuing to keep growing. Uh, Y'all continue to keep listening. Remember to prove and to test and try everything. Every word that I say, prove, test, and try it, brothers and sisters, okay? Um, because I want you to know the truth. I want you to be inspired. Um, I have to preach tough and preach hard because this is a cold, hard, cruel, callous generation. But remember, when the soul goes forth the soul, and he's putting out the seed. It all depends on what type of ground that seed is landing on. And, uh, and then it tells you about uh, what happens to the seed once it hits certain types of ground. So my question is, what is your heart like when his word is coming forth? Um, because we don't prophesy and preach smooth things. and We don't tickle your ears. We give you the truth. Uh, we also have edifying words. Um, at times of encouragement where we scream, jump, shout, and thank y'all for the victory and stuff. Um, but when we look at this wicked and perverse generation that we're in, there ain't too much to be shouting about right now when you look at all the iniquity that is permitted and all the iniquity that is going on today in this world. Uh, it's just a shame, especially amongst Israel. So y'all be encouraged. Um, I'm strengthening. You know, I've been converted, so now I'm strengthening my brother. And I'm strengthening that which has remained. I don't too much care about the terrors, uh, not one bit. And that's just the truth. Let's go to Texas. Uh, 713 to Sister Rachel. It's Pastor Dow. We're going to show you the radio broadcast. How can I help you, Sister Rachel? Goodbye, Shalom, Pastor. Sister Rachel and Sister Nastasha. Um, I just really just wanted to see if I could blow my clarinet. Um, that's just the type of shofar I have for the moment. Just because the devil is just, just really on both of us right now. I just want to know if that was okay. Sure. But you know, one of the greatest deliverances is submit yourself to Yah. Resist Satan and he will flee. Yes. But go ahead and blow yourself, blow the clarinet. Yes, sir. Thank you. Pretty good. Well, hallelujah. That's pretty good. Keep going, all right? Keep practicing. Thank you. 
Passover. All right. Bless y'all. Shabbat shalom. See y'all Passover. All right, all right, all right. Saints of the Most High. Just beautiful. You know, saints, that we all, while we are here in this Desparia, um, and we're separated from our homeland, and Jerusalem is still being trodden down of the Gentiles, the seed of Japhet, uh, the second Khazarian kingdom here on this earth, um, keep hope alive because uh, we're going into the kingdom. Hallelujah. We, we make it, we win. Hallelujah. Let's go to Florida. Call number 407. 407 is Pastor Dow. You're straight with True Radio Broadcast. How can I help you? How can I help you? Hello? Hell is low. Hello, Pastor. This is Jacob. Hey, Jacob. How you doing down there? Good. How are you? I just wanted to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Down there, we're, I'm here with Brother Dion and Sister Laura. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Um, can I blow the show off with you guys? Sure. Have fun. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Shalom. Shalom, Florida. Hey, I tell you what, y'all make sure y'all bring them show paws for Passover too, because we're gonna do a lot of blowing there. All right, let's go to New Jersey. Call number two eight uh, two zero one two zero one. It's Pastor Dow. You on the Straight with Truth Radio broadcast? How can I help you? Oh, how are you doing, Pastor Dow? It's uh, my name is Anthony. Uh, my brother just my brother Johnny just called in. Yeah. I just wanted to, uh, you know, say, uh, you know, thank the Most High God and, uh, you know, thank you for all your hard work and you, uh, your good work that you're doing in his name. You know, uh, all the saints definitely are being edified by uh, your words. Well, hey, um, thank, thank you for the encouraging words. Yeah, um, I was going to say, uh, I just wanted to, you know, give you a little bit of backstory. Me and my brother, it was actually uh, 2012. We started listening to you. The first video I found by uh, by you was um, the one where you were exposing that uh, the Harold Camping guy. Yes. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was very edifying. And I was listening, and I'm like, you know what, man? I have a feeling about this man. So I was watching your other videos, and I didn't really understand the baptism at the time. But as soon as like you said it, like it hit my spirit, and uh, you uh, you know. God, through you, actually pulled me out of uh, another false prophet, um, out of a false prophet, uh, like, control. It wasn't Harold Camping, it was another person. But, um, yeah, you know, and everything, ever since then, you know, everything's been uh, going good, you know. Just uh, every day, you know, trying to fight the good fight. And uh, especially this last week alone, I've just been praying, and uh, it seems like, the Father's been answering, like, all my prayers, you know. Like, I, I'm, like, starting to work out. I'm starting to cast off all the sin, you know. And um, me and my brother, we're going to go meet uh, meet up with Brother Randy for Shabbat. Brother Randy is a the very strong, good, excellent, and strong Israelite. Yes, Brother Randy is a very good, strong, excellent Israelite. But I would recommend anybody to have fellowship with because his heart is in the right place, and he's a very good, Good sound Israelite. You'll be in good hands. Yes, no, I could definitely tell. We, yeah, we invited him over. We were talking to him for like an hour, and I can tell. Um, you know, his words are really edifying, and I'm really, really glad to have fellowship. I've been, I've been basically praying. Uh, you know, for fellowship and deliverance, and God's really, really moving right now. He's moving like throughout my whole family. Like my, like I have, uh, I have. Uh, three brothers and my mom and my dad and like everybody's waking up you know they're all watching your videos and it's uh it's a total blessing beautiful so i'd like to thank you for that well keep up getting the word out all right all right i just got one more little thing to say um are, are you still handing out dvds because i actually have like 200 blank dvds i was going to give randy to bring down to you if if you if you need them um, you mean are you giving me DVDs? Yeah, I'm giving you 
Yeah, yeah. I'm saying I have uh, I have 220 DVDs, and I remember it was like a year or two you brought up how, uh, you know, you, you basically burn DVDs and you hand them out to the other saints for edification. And um, I actually have like 200 of them, and I was wondering if, if you're still handing out DVDs and you would like these ones. Well, I mean, we would be glad to take the DVDs, but I haven't been handing out DVDs in a long, long period of time since, you know, the advancements of technology where people just go and download, you know, the whole service and everything, you know, straightway tech team with Brother Jermaine, or they either go to the website or they just record it as it's been played. You understand what I mean? There's no need for me to really even pass out DVDs anymore. Okay, I mean, um... I mean, I guess I could just, I, I, you know what, though, I guess I could probably keep them, and I will, uh, what I'll do is I'll go over a couple of your Sabbath services, and I'll, I'll burn them out, and I'll hand them out to people. Do that. There you go. That's a good idea. Download Sabbath services. Uh, also, give them out. Uh, I'm sorry. You didn't. Uh, I, I was basically going to say, uh, also, um, you know, me and my brother, we're, uh, we'd like to give you an offering, and uh, I will be giving it to uh, Brother Randy. All right. Well, bless you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, bind us together, Father. More Israelites continue to keep waking up. Either this is Red, Brother Red, or Sister Jade. Call number 931. It's Pastor Dow. You know, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Radio Broadcast. How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Hey, Sister Janae. Shabbat Shalom. How y'all holding the things down down there? We are blessed by the Most High Yah. Um, I just wanted to call in and say Shabbat Shalom to you and all the saints um, scattered abroad. And I wanted to let you know that the last few videos that you have done, like, I, I just believe that the Holy Spirit just, is just putting it on your heart because it's just been exactly what we needed. Even to the uh, Granny Gaston's newsletter last night, it was it was just right on the head. That was exactly what we we've been like questions that we've been having is just being answered. Beautiful. Hallelujah. I don't want to take up too much of your time, Pastor. I want you to get to the other callers. So bless you and bless all the saints, and we're praying for. All the saints, and we're praying for Straightway in the ministry, and we love you guys, and we hope to see you all at Passover. All right, come on up. All right, bless you. Shabbat shalom. Bless you. All right, let's go to Ohio. Ohio, call number 614. It's Pastor Dow. On your own Straightway Truth, how can I help you? And then we'll go to Pennsylvania, and then Pennsylvania will be the last call for the night. Come on, Ohio. Pastor you got me on the air. Am I talking with Pastor Dow? You are talking with Pastor Dow, and you are live, and you are on the air. This is Brother Mike from Columbus, Ohio, the ex-smoker, 36 years. Brother Mike, I tell you, did you, hear, did, did you hear what I, the letter that I read and how, man, people really rejoice over that testimony, Brother Mike? Hey, I'm looking better, too. I'm feeling better. But, uh, you know, I get people... People come to me for advice. I don't know why. I really don't know why. You can't get no worse than me. But uh, <laughs> there's been a lot of changes in our lives, and, and this conversion has been very, very painful. Yes. Uh, yes. Very upsetting, but it has been edifying to my soul. Glory. Glory. And I can't thank you more than enough. I thank the Father for you, but I thank you for making the choice. To, to adhere to his word and what he calls you to do. Well, hallelujah. Well, you know, it, it's, it's people, saints like you that strengthen my hand. Pray for me. They continue to keep me in prayer before the Father. And, and you just get it. You have the revelation. You know what the Father's doing. And and uh, and you just understand it. And not only that, he's just delivering you. Delivering you, setting you free. And it's worth it, brother. It's worth it being in the ministry to hear edifying testimonies and how people are overcoming such as you, brother. We even got your picture of you and your wife hanging up in the dining hall. All right. Hey, I lost a little weight. I'm going to really look good when I get there. All right. <laughs> look, look like I'm in better shape. But anyway, brother, you said a, you said a word, Pastor Dow, uh, deliverance. And that's, that's what I'm in need of. And I don't know if I can wait till gathering other saints. I mean, if I have to wait, I have to wait. But 
if, if we can come down there sooner and get some deliverance, I have read and learned through your preaching and teaching and, and been all through that word because uh, I, was, I was beat up and robbed by the Christian and then held hostage by the seven-day event. My, my, my. Except for 10 years. And I thought, I thought there ain't no pastors, there ain't no hope. I'm just going to read and study and, and, and pray not to lead to my own understanding. There ain't no men, uh, Yah, on, and then I typed in, come out of her, my people, a book which I was studying with the Seventh-day Adventists, where I realized through studying that he didn't call no women to preach, but they giving this woman all this praise, and she's making light of things that just ain't matching up. So, you know, uh, once I escaped from them, I just sat, we just sat for 10 years at home and kept the Sabbath. And one day I typed in, come out of here, my people, and there you were, they're passed down. Well, hallelujah. Well, brother, you know, keep on pressing. Keep on pressing, brother Mike. And, um, hey, we're looking forward to seeing you, but you do not have to wait for gathering of the saints. We're going to have a mass deliverance service, another major deliverance. Every feast day we have a deliverance service. So this Passover Unleavened Bread, we're going to have a, a serious deliverance service. You'll see. Okay. Well, we, we hope to come down. I'm going to get in touch with Elder Doug. I can't wait to meet him. I guess I get to meet him on the phone first. Hallelujah. Uh, see how we work this out. Well, all right, my brother. Just let us know when you're coming, and um, and and uh, just just be prepared. Elder Doug will fill you in, okay? Okay, brother. Good talk to you. Good day. Bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. It ain't nice to hear another overcoming 36 years of smoking. And, y'all, we read his letter on the Sabbath, and y'all heard how he overcame. Is that not worth it all? Huh? Last call for the night, Pennsylvania. Call number 814. It's Pastor Dow. You're on the Street with 230. Your broadcast, How Can I Help You? Hey, hello, Pastor Dow. This is Michael from State College. Oh, State College. How you doing? Is that, is that Penn State? Yeah, that's Penn State. Um, I'm a first-time caller, but um, I've been listening to you for about a year, and then finally been, you know, listening to the straightway uh, tech team, and then I recently just started listening to your broadcast live. Glory. But, uh, you know, I want to say that, you know, after growing up in the church and having pastors, you know, give you, give you a bunch of lines and pulling with you, it's finally nice to have someone that tells you straight out, you know, what the truth is without any regard to what man has to say about it. You got that right. So I, I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you're doing down there. Uh, hopefully sometime in the future, you know, I can come down and contribute, you know, to what you guys are doing. I don't know exactly what community life is like, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm up here in the city and there's not many states up here, even though I do go to a fellowship. Uh, <laughs> I go to a Messianic congregation. Wow. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, a lot of the stuff I learned from you and what I check out, I'm actually starting to share it with a lot of them, and I'm really starting to question whether it should be called a Messianic congregation, but because a lot of the stuff you say, they, like you say, they say it behind closed doors, but they won't really tell the people. There you I'm go. Trying to push it out. I've been trying to push it out in the forefront, and it's actually starting to come out in the forefront where they can't hide it anymore. Really? Oh, absolutely. How are they handling it? The, uh... Well, well, the head rabbi, man, I uh, I pushed the whole Kazar thing out in the front last Saturday, and he he said, yeah, absolutely, there's Kazars over there. It's political Zionism. Then what in the world are they doing licking their boots? Well, see, I think it's double-mindedness. Yeah, my brother. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. But there are more and more people, just like you all across the United States, that are waking up. Um, who used to be in part, you know, be in fellowships with Messianic groups, and then they go and question, you know, um, the brethren and or the people uh, in reference to the doctrine come to find out that I've been telling the truth all this long. It may not be popular to the ears, uh, but I don't know why, brother, but these people in these Messianic and these Hebraic groups, they love practicing collusion for some reason. I don't know why, but they just do it. Uh, to me, it's like a soft form of prejudices. Uh, prejudice, um, but brother, whatever you can do, uh, as long as you know you, you still have a clearance to be there, 
keep trying to wake them up, but more than anything, keep listening. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the thing is, though, uh, you know, what should I say? Uh, the thing is, I, I just I just don't understand. I'm going to bring it up to them sometime. Yeah. I got to bring it up in a in a godly manner because I've done some things in the past with people in leadership that you know I was like a 20 year old and I'm thinking I'm a hot shot and I'm bringing up stuff the wrong way and it kind of like kind of ticks people off. Yeah, you just be very honorable, very respectful, and tactful. And if you're going to question and bring up stuff, there's a way to do it out in the open. But then if you really want to get to the nitty gritty. That's when you just actually sit down and come over to the side and just have a, a talk with them and then just see what see where their heart is. Yeah, I mean they're they're open to like they, they okay they they say with their mouths that they're open to the Holy Spirit, but I mean there's not a lot of evidence of it. Well, let me tell you this, brother. Uh, I, I I deal with people like it all the time, um, and 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 it's clear. Blessed are not the hearers, but the doers. You know, people can acknowledge yeah. the truth all day long, but unless they are doing it, brother, they all they're doing is just giving you lip service. That's about it. If they're not doing what the, the Scripture says, they're not doing what the Bible says, um, they don't believe it, brother. I'm, I'm sorry. People can acknowledge the truth, but if they are not doing it, they do not believe it. It is just that simple. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. Sure. I, I brought up that whole Star of David thing to them, and they just weren't having it, and they wouldn't show any evidence of why it's good. And well, all I've seen on the other side is this thing comes from the occult. It does. Then I guess um, that's another reason for you to just go ahead and um, separate and save yourself from his untoward generation. Oh, uh, so really, get, like, get out of there and not put up a fight? No, I mean, you just, you just, a lot of times people are voting with their feet. There are people on this broadcast all the time. I mean, that, you talk Brother Steve out in California, Brother David out there in Arizona. There are people who come out of the Messianic congregation, brother, who, who really, truly know about these people. And they voted with their feet, brother. I mean, there's nothing that says you have to have fellowship with these people, especially when they refuse to put down satanic symbols and, and they refuse to actually, you know, change uh, to what the word of Yah says, because most times people are bound by tradition, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. I mean, I brought up to him that, you know, from my perspective, which I think is a poor perspective, that this symbol qualifies as a graven image. And well, then they start playing semantic games where, well, is it really graven, you know? Or do you have pictures of yourself? You know, you know you're not supposed to take pictures of yourself and all that. I just, I don't know, it just seems like word games. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, but I, I tell you what, brother, you know, if, if your heart is not clear with them, and they're going to, they, hey, they are master manipulators. They, they know how to tap dance on a lot of stuff. Um, but if they want to do their star, let them do the star. You make sure you don't do it. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I don't know. I've just been feeling really down going there for the last couple of weeks. I've been really getting grieved. With well, don't don't stuff. go then. Just have Sabbath with us on the, on the broadcast every Sabbath at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah, we have been when we have big storms up here. Well, I mean, if, snows, if really you don't <laughs> if you don't want your heart grieved, brother, anymore, then just have Sabbath with us and leave them people alone. Don't go no more. Yeah, yeah, I just wish there were some more people up here that were like-minded. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody close. We definitely travel with people who are close up here. But, uh, I don't know. It's just something i got to talk to with my wife about because, uh, well, I kind of have a track record of, you know, I guess just leaving places. Well, just make sure this time that you're leaving, you're going to the right place. I mean, I understand, brother, but, yeah. you know, this is because you're in search for the truth. Your soul is thirsty. You're in search for it, brother, and, and you really can't, um, you can't really find any rest in this land, brother, until you find it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for the last probably, probably like seven or eight years, you know, for the most part, we haven't been going anywhere because 
my, myself is I've been fed up with with people not giving a darn for anything. You tell them what the scripture says, and they flat out say, "Well, that's your opinion." Hey, let me um. That's your opinion. Hey, hey, um, uh, brother Michael, is it okay if I give your phone number to a couple of faithful saints um, that that's close by your area? Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in touch with Brother Vernon and Sister Carrie, okay? Okay. But just be encouraged, brother. Be encouraged. All right. Keep listening. Well, absolutely. I got you uh, on my iPod all day. Well, hallelujah. So, 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 working, so, uh, tell me, brother, how does that word that that you hear coming from me, uh, preaching, teaching, and, and, and can how, how does it bring about? The convicting power. I mean, do you, you you've got this? Apparently, you got the ears to hear. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, it's just that you know sometimes I struggle with the flesh. Yep. So that sort of gets that sort of gets in the way, and um, I'm learning gradually here how to put a lot of that to death. You know, whether it's a quarrel with my wife or whatever. You know, not to say that we don't get into arguments, but uh, it used to be really bad in my house, but. Uh, you know, as of lately, ever since we came to tour and listening to you, you know, we've both been learning a lot, you know. Oh, and, uh, wonderful. Before, Look. when I, I first started listening to you, uh, you know, my, my wife, she didn't like all the yelling and, you know, from you. Sure. You know, some of the comments. But I, I tell her that, I tell her that, you know what, when you read the prophets, all you're reading is words on the page. You have no idea, like, like what how they said things, you know, how loud they were. And so I, I basically told her, like, you can't judge based on the volume of someone's message. Hey. You got to base it on the content. You know what, brother Michael? So now, yeah. Go ahead, finish. Yeah, so uh, over time, we um, basically I've had her listen to you, especially on the, on the deliverance side of things, and she's been taking away a lot of good things you know, from your preaching. Good. So, she is, uh, she is starting to listen a lot more. She still can't stand the yelling, and that's because she grew up in a, an abusive home where her father yelled at her mother all the time. Hey, just tell her that I'm lifting up my voice like a trumpet for sin, and tell her that the prophets, there was a reason why Israel stoned and killed every prophet, it, and it wasn't because they were speaking nice, kind, sweet words to them either. Yeah. Just tell her, do not yeah. take it personally. Just tell her, don't take it personally. Just tell her, just listen to the message. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, when you when you say you're a one of a kind pastor, that's definitely the case because you know you look throughout this entire land and basically we got a bunch of women up there in the pulpit. That that is an abomination. It's, it's just a literal abomination. And, it, and it's totally sickening because. When a man actually gets up there and starts raising his voice and declaring the word of Yah from on high, they basically call him a hater. When they well, shouldn't actually be doing it because it takes a lot of love to get up there and do that in the first place. Well, I know that you know that, but you know, in, in everything you do in life, first of all, you cannot, you have, you know, as me as a pastor, I don't have regard for men that's going to judge me as I am preaching and teaching the word. I'm a servant of Yah first, and I'm not here to please man. I'm here to please Yah. And everyone that has the ears to hear, they will understand, and they will please Yah in return. So I'm not too much worried about people who are sensitive, especially in this emasculated and feminine generation. Uh, when somebody lifts up their voice and they're real sensitive towards you, you know, especially men today, and they're offended. I really truly could care less about them because it still doesn't change the testimony. Of look how many people week after week that are coming to this truth yeah. and being converted. So, you know, the word of the Most High God is going out, whether people hear or forbear. His will is going to be accomplished. And I've always told him, Father, you just give me the strength to keep blessing me, to keep watching over me, and I will continue to preach and teach your word and your truth, and sinners will be converted. Amen. One final thing, Pastor, before I go, uh, I just wanted to thank Brother Spinney, you know, for the courage you know, and the obedience and the message you gave the other day that you posted. Oh, it's beautiful, wasn't it? Oh my goodness, that's wow. I, you know, definitely need to hear you know a lot of that, and uh, 
you know, because, you know, there's still some, well, there's still some issues, you know, you know, with authority stuff with, with me, and definitely need to hear that. Well, hallelujah. So, Lord to the king. Get stronger, Israel. I'll let you go, Pastor. I'll let you go, Pastor. All right, my brother. You keep getting stronger. Keep listening, all right? Absolutely. All, all right. right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. What a wonderful phone calls again tonight, huh? More new people continue to keep coming on. I told you we'll have a whole brand new slew of new people here for Passover. It's going to be a wonderful meeting. Y'all be encouraged, all right? I'm going to head on down, get ready for the Sabbath. I bless each and every last one of you. Sweet precious and strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name. I'll soon come in King Jesus Christ. Shabbat Shalom. Be the Father's will, and I believe it is His will. See you Sabbath morning, all right? The King is coming. Look at him looking.